a life-changing arrival at the Bates home. I'm so excited! Two beds for at least two kids. I feel like I should be wearing like hazmat gloves or something. I'm glad Lawson's not here. He's running an errand because he literally would not have let me do that. But I did it. Woo! She can walk! I can't believe it! Yay, good job! Look at that smile, guys. You know they love you when they're with you for the good times and the bad. Dude, I have never, ever oh, seen something make Nathan so happy. Like, I don't even make him this happy. <laughs> <laughs> I guess the the secret is out. Yeah. RV horror stories. I'm just glad I got somebody that knows how to make these things tick. Oh, you want to fly it, Lawson? Gonna give it my best shot. Let's see what we can do. What are the just basics that keep you out of the danger zone? Instrument rated conditions. That's where a lot of accidents happen. If need be, you can activate the parachute. Good day, crew. Last night at like two in the morning, we had a life-changing arrival at the Bates home here in Nashville, Tennessee. Tiff, you want to tell them what we did? I'm so excited. Let's turn that way. Okay. Okay, let's go, guys. We're turning that way. We went and did something. We bought a camper trailer. We bought a camper, guys. If you thought we traveled, Wait until we get in this bad boy. It's about or to girl. get crazy exciting. That's what I mean. But I think this was literally the perfect fit for us. We've been looking at these and wanting to do this for a while. Tiffany has all of these crazy renovation, crazy awesome renovation plans. I think just drive that thing as is if it's clean, but not. Nah. We got to make Tiffany absolutely love this bad boy. And I am going to give you the before walkthrough of what we're looking at right now, what we're planning on doing, and Tiff's ready to rock and roll. Already tearing things up, fixing things, you know, making it beautiful. I've never had a camper. Obviously his family has the bigger RVs like the- That you drive. That you drive. So this one you pull. Now I was a little bit like hesitant to get this camper because I've never owned one. And so we actually sold Lawson's Forerunner. So the Forerunner and Nathan is giving us all the camping guru tips because he is like living that RV life for real. And so I think Josie and Kelton have one now. Mm -hmm. My dad has one. I guess it's the thing to do. Yeah. But we started with the baby size and we're going to show it to you. Are you ready? You know how people name their cars? Should we name our camper? Is that a thing? I don't know. We could. So the Road Runner, because we're about to tear up the road. Yeah. If you are one of those folks who are slaying at the RV life, please fire away. Yes. And tell us all the tips. Uh, I have winterized it, so it's good on that. Let's give you the quick tour. Tip, are you ready? Yep. Let's bring them in. Well, ciao. I already know I have to fix a step. That's not coming down, but uh, that's not the end of the world. There's a lot of stuff. Lights aren't turning on? They were earlier. We broke it already, guys. <laughs> Nothing's turning on. Okay, I got it plugged in. I literally was in this bad boy last night. Everything was working. It was on. It was nice. Nathan told me to leave it plugged in. All right, well, we broke it already. While Lawson is busy fixing all of our problems, here's the bed. Obviously, we're gonna redo this fluffy mattress. The kind people before put this AC in. We have all this storage. Lovely um, push-up blinds. Ooh, and these balances. How nice is that, guys? It's really beautiful when it's lighter, but all the lights turned on last night. I must have did something. I'm forgetting. I just pushed these and they would turn off. What is that? Rotate for travel. Aha. Uh -huh. Must mean something. But talk about space. This is epic because you know you lay the seat like this and you're having your little meal right here but this lifts up and can be taken off and turned into a bed or you can have the space we got the big bed over here tiff has already went and bought these sticky things i don't know what for but i think she wants to put them on the backsplash because she don't like this dark color she wants like white. i already peeled 
this gross stuff off. So we got all these cabinet space, tons of cabinet space. I wanna, I'm gonna get new knobs Microwave. from Hobby Lobby. Good chow. Everything's very clean in here. No. Got me a little range. Two beds for at least two kids. Uh, that'll be starters for us, we hope. Got the bathroom. This could use a little TLC. I already know that we want to change like the head on the shower from this little chintzy one to something better. I wanna change this right here to like a better sink faucet thing, and then we should be in business. But for now, this is the very short basic tour without the lights because I don't know why they're not coming on. So if you're a camper pro, tell me why in the comments. Maybe we can figure this thing out together. We're also gonna wanna know next what your recommended destinations are because this is just the beginning of the adventure. Okay guys, now you've seen it, but that's just the beginning. You ready for the sun? Yes, and we're not gonna do any like complete renovations and stuff. I feel like it's a perfectly good camper, but yeah. as me, I just like to make a personal touch on it and not make, make it, it cute. so like factory. Needs to be Tiffany approved. Yay. I'm gonna go peel all that wallpaper off. Let's do this. Okay guys, I snuck into the camper and I brought my two flathead screwdrivers and do you see this ugly backsplash that they put? They didn't put it here, but they put it behind the burners. I'm gonna replace it, but for now I'm just gonna try to get it off. I was able to get the first piece off with my hand and then it kind of got hard because they put a lot of um, sticky uh, stuff behind it. So I'm gonna use this to hopefully scrape it and not damage what's behind it. And then I'm going to put these little sticky things on. I know there's a lot of opinions, watched a ton of YouTube, them saying it's gonna fall off in the summer heat, um, turn yellow, I have no idea. I am not an expert in renovation construction, um, so you do however you want. I heard this one girl say you could buy like boards from Home Depot or Lowe's or something and then nail gun them, but I don't wanna deal with a nail gun. <laughs> I know I can't do an extreme renovation like we did on our house. So if you go to our house and renovation, um, playlist you can see how we redid our whole house with the help of Lawson's brothers um, but this one's kind of gonna just be really light and easy it doesn't need to be completely gutted it just needs a cute facelift so yeah let's see how this goes one panel off it came off so easily I'm so happy it did I don't want to like ruin the back so I'm trying to be careful like which one I pick next that one was pretty easy because it had a little lip that was already off. Okay. Ha ha! Second panel off! Whoever picked these, would you pick these? No hate. If you like this style, I will give these to you. But for me, it's just not happening. Oh, they come off so easily! I'm so happy! This one might be a little bit harder. It came off like that. I have a bag of like clips that they put everywhere around the camper, which I know are helpful because you gotta hang things and you don't wanna put like nails in your walls. But I did just because they were plastic and white, I don't really want that. So I'm gonna try to find hooks or things that can just stick on the wall. Our mattresses, you guys, Lawson was like, oh no, we'll keep the same mattresses. Now there's a debate on this. You let me know your thoughts. Do you, w would you wanna keep the mattress that someone slept on or to save money, which is great. If you do that, amazing. Or I just got us new mattresses off of Amazon, were not that expensive at all, and replaced them just because I'm thinking of like, what could be on that mattress? I don't know, maybe someone died on that mattress. But all the lights work now, didn't work the other day, but Lawson fixed the breakers. This mattress is just not happening, guys. Yeah, I don't know what that is. Let's throw it away. Oh, guys, it's so gross. It's fine, it's just a mattress, not trying to be dramatic, but I just don't know what's on here because it's the mattress is wet, you guys. And it's inside, so why is it wet? I feel like I should be wearing like hazmat gloves or something. Maybe I'm being too dramatic. My husband's wearing off on me. He's a bit dramatic, but I love him. I'm gonna remove this really ugly curtain because there's really no privacy needed in this camper anyway because it's just one tiny little room and so this just kind of makes it smaller and it's just not my favorite color brown. If you like this color brown, I will ship this to you as well as the backsplash that I tore off. <laughs> Ow! 
literally just hurt myself. I just want to make it look as big as possible. Oh, I did it. It took a little longer than I thought. There were two pieces that were so glued on there. So I took this knife. Do not do this. This is bad. Do not do this. So I'm showing you what not to do that I just did. I just literally took it and I like hit it to like, not that way, but just kind of like to get it up because this really sharp pointy end like lifts it in the back. Try this one. Boop, you pop it off. Don't do that. You could seriously hurt yourself. I'm not a professional. I am not a professional. So I'm just showing you what I did. I'm glad Lawson's not here. He's running an errand because he literally would not have let me do that. But I did it. Woo! I think I'm done for today. I know it seems like really fast, obviously, because in the video, but I probably spent like almost two hours in here just trying to do that because taking that off was a lot. Oh, and you can see I kind of did some of the white background, the backsplash, but I'm gonna leave the rest to Warden because you have to cut like holes in here and I'm not that delicate and that handy to cut around that. I took off all the hooks, took off the ugly curtain, then I put these little seat things on. I'm literally just trying to do the bare minimum that I can. I think what's gonna help this is a really good scrub. Another thing is this is this whole sink setup is gonna be replaced. I wanna put like a white thing in here and then a black handle. So lots to do, but not too much because I'm gonna try to make it as simple as possible. So bye. It is happening in Nashville, Tennessee. It's the first run in our brand new camping trailer, guys. This is a get it fixed trial and error type of run because we've never done this. I've got my old truck hooked up to it. Fingers crossed it takes us across America like we need it to. And then the Jayco, we are taking you to Nathan and Esther's place in Northwest Arkansas. And they are the RV gurus, specialists living in a massive one. So we're just trying to get tips on how to live in a tiny one. Before we head west to places like Oregon, Washington, north to Canada, California, and anywhere our hearts desire. I gotta get my boy Duke because he's going on this long road trip with us. Bless rock and roll. Duke, are you ready to go on your first big road trip? Look at that face. Are you ready, buddy? <laughs> Duke, are you ready? closet okay we always forget something tip forgot a jacket i'm grabbing that and then we finally hit the road jack crew about 10 hours later even though it was only a seven hour 50 minute drive we are rolling in about 10 minutes away Duke is chilling and resting in the back you ready Duke I think he is hey look who came to visit us whoa He's back here. this is gonna be so fun Guys, we've obviously arrived, and I'm trying to get this cutie to walk for us for the first time. Come here, cutie, get up. Get I'm walk? not a stranger. What's up, We dude? all know you can. We all know it. <laughs> and she goes for the baby. The rug <laughs> She can walk. I can't believe it. Yay, good job. Look at that smile, guys. Did she get cuter since last time we saw her? Yes, she did. And nothing's going to change. She's gonna keep getting cuter. She's got her little baby. She can almost talk. She can obviously walk now. Oh my word. She's doing yeah, a little scooty. She does scoot fast. I got you, I got you, I got you. <laughs> I got you. <laughs> you want the baby again? Get the baby. Get the baby. Woo! <laughs> oh. <laughs> it may be midnight, but we have arrived at this beautiful and new home of Nathan and Esther's. Nate's cooking us up some bacon because we were starving. Yeah. Tiff is playing oh. with her favorite. And 
This is the coziest place ever. We're gonna show you more tomorrow, but for tonight, we gotta hit the hay. Get ready for the real adventure tomorrow. Oh, we'll show you around. We're leaving you with the cutest. Say bye, Kenneth. Cutie. Peace out, crew. Good night. Good morning, crew from Arkansas. We actually are in Little Rock. We already took a morning flight and we're running back to Springdale. Nate had to drop a client off. Nate, what are we flying? We're flying a 2018 SR22 Turbo. This is one of the greatest aircraft you could buy and it has a parachute for the entire airplane. Hopefully we won't have to use it today. I don't want to use the parachute, but it is nice to have the comfort of knowing that, hey, if stuff goes wrong, just pull the lid. And old Lawson, he needs to get back in the swing of things flying airplanes, so. I do. It's a nice little morning flight together, drop off a client and we'll be right back. Let's do it. Here we go. So I've been a pilot for like seven years. Nate, you've been a pilot for how long? 10. 10 years, guys. And a lot of things that you don't realize are when you go to the airport, of course, we're going to the commercial terminal. You're going through TSA, all that hoopla. It's not so friendly and cool. But when you're flying private, you go to the FBO. They got everything sometimes. So this is the private terminal for private aircraft. Let us give you a little bit of a tour. A lot of you guys know he's an instructor but he's not just an instructor he's doing a lot of uh, other business things flying clients around the country and the world tell us cool. what a day in the life looks okay. like let me show you real quick what the private terminal looks like here's a lounge area you know you're always looking for a seat at the airport well we have plenty of seats they're very comfortable and you can watch around the golf over here we have planning areas where you can call you can pull up your flight plans on the computer and um, get ready for navigation or print materials. Here's our conference room. So if I fly a client and we need to have a meeting or something, we just walk right in and we have a full-scale conference room. This is where it gets special. The pilot lounge. Pilots have their own separate areas. We have our own movie theater in here with these really cool reclining chairs where you can just relax, kick your feet back and watch a movie while you're waiting on your clients. I think I'm getting why that uh, private pilot life is so cool especially when other folks are paying you to fly them and it's not on your dime imagine having this in the commercial terminal every day at work but that's not all yeah not only is there a lounge a private theater uh free coffee on demand lattes if you need to take a nap this is one of the room. quiet rooms you come in and have it's your own just little room here. and fold this out take a nap they have blankets and pillows and you know just hang out and chill planning more right little here. workspaces and then more private quiet rooms oh i like it i could relax here all day but hey we do gotta fly serious out of here in a minute something else i'll show you just in case you feel like taking a shower let me show you the pilot's bathrooms oh my stars showers like everything you need it really is state of the art guys they ain't kid another cool thing about being a pilot is it's all free. Just because you're a pilot, welcome into the VIP lounge. Everything is free and all access. Welcome to Signature. Any of you looking to become a pilot, it ain't a bad life. Cool coffee machines here. I like a French vanilla. A really expensive Keurig. It like grinds it and it does the milk and the espresso and like everything all into one cup. I gotta be honest guys, the coffee machine alone would sell me on the lifestyle. Uh, the other perks are great, but this good of coffee at your fingertips every single day, unlimited. Mm -mm -mm. Hard to turn down. Really? <laughs> okay, guys, got our coffee. We're back to the skies. Let's go fly. This one's a Phenom 300. This one's a PC-24 Pilatus jet. This one's the Eclipse jet, which is really like a baby jet. Honda jet. It's another small, um, light business jet. And then over here, we've got the SR-22 Cirrus. I see a PA-32 T-tail over there. And looks like a turbine Malibu, so either a jet prop or a Meridian. Today, we're flying the Cirrus. I'll show you the layout. And again, the best thing about this thing, the big sell for Cirrus is the parachute. You hope you don't have to use it, but just in case, little peace of mind, 
Check that beauty out. This aircraft will go up to 25,000 feet. It's got oxygen, it's got <laughs> ice systems on board. This is a 180 knot aircraft, over 200 miles an hour, five people, and it'll take you about a thousand miles anywhere in the USA. Let's take it back home to Springdale. You wanna fly it, Lawson? Gonna give it my best shot. Let's see what we can do. Okay, crew, it looks tight, but it's not tight in here. It's because my camera is pushing us back a little bit. But Nathan, obviously with flying, safety first, you never want to take anything for granted. What are the just basics that keep you out of the danger zone when you're flying any plane? Flying airplanes, the big ones are following all the rules. Understanding 60% of aircraft accidents in general aviation are fuel related. So make sure you have good quality fuel. You gotta have fuel in the plane. You have enough gas to get where you're going. That's 60% of the time. That's the biggest problem. Next, make sure that you know what weather you're flying in and become a really well-trained pilot to know how to navigate bad weather and avoid it. Got it. Okay, guys, we're gonna take you up to the skies. It is IFR, which is instrument rated conditions. And that's good for training, but that's where a lot of accidents happen when people aren't playing by the book. We're gonna play by the book. Let's go. Startup procedure on the SR-22 Turbo. This is November 4791 Charlie. Make sure that we've got our seat belts fashioned, emergency exits, parachute. If the pilot became decapacitated, you could easily push this one blue button and the airplane just flies straight and level from then on out. And if need be, you can activate the parachute and float down on the parachute. We've got our wind, we have our I'm safe checklist, we have our fuel on board set, we have our weight and balance program. Our pre-flight inspection is complete. Our weight and balance is computed, our emergency equipment's on board, our passengers are briefed, seat, seat belts and harnesses, and no external power, batteries are owned. Woo! And just like that, we're back at home base with the big boys. The plane flew perfect. I got a good landing in. Cirruses really are the dream private slash commercial fly yourself plane. And after that experience, you can see why. State of the art, absolutely loved it. It would not fit the entire band but it would fit a small family, not your typical Bates family, but a small family. Nate's a great instructor and yeah, off to more adventure. Gonna meet up with the girls, baby Kenna. Our boy Duke is spending time here too. So gonna check in on him and see what there is to do around this beautiful part of the country. I was gonna show you the RV first, but I gotta show you the truck first, Nate. What did you go and buy? This is my favorite truck I've ever had. Nissan Type, but they put a Cummins diesel engine in it, and it makes it a really nice truck. Dude, I okay, have never, ever oh, seen wait. something make Nathan so happy. Like, I don't even make him this happy. <laughs> what? <laughs> he sees this truck and he drools. He loves it so much. <laughs> Esther says she's in competition with this truck for attention, I guess. The, the secret is out. Oh, <laughs> Get a truck, your man will be happy. <laughs> God bless America and pick up trucks. I don't know what I'm gonna do, guys. I ain't jealous, I'm still clugging around in the old Ford. But hey, maybe it's inspired me to get a new truck, Nate. Should I do it? I don't know, you got a good old truck. That was your first car, man. You should keep that truck. That's right, says the man who just went out and got him the new big one, Diesel. It's not new. This is a used, rebuilt used. title, wrecked truck, uh, with, you know. Sure don't look like it to me. I don't know, when I met Nathan, he had like a $100 little Jetta. <laughs> <laughs> it was great, but. See, here guys, the real moral to this story is, you know they love you when they're with you for the good times and the bad. So Esther was rolling with Nate when he had the little Jetta, and now she's rolling with him in the Cummins Diesel. I love it all. I just need Nathan. That's all I want. I love Esther. Great one, guys.
Hey, you can go trash this truck tomorrow. I just need us to. That's the perspective you gotta have. Okay, guys, we just stopped because Nathan is gonna let me drive the beast and get the feeling. I don't know if this is gonna just make me covetous or inspire me, but either way. Are you scared of my driving girls? No, no. Tiffany says now we're gonna have to buy a truck. Oh no. <laughs> said, Tiff, you think we're gonna I have to buy a truck? This is so bad, you guys. And Esther goes, why? And I go, because now we're gonna have to buy a truck. Sorry. And Esther goes, I'm sorry. Oh, oh, oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I am feeling the vibe, guys. You just literally change your whole mood. I watched a Steve Harvey clip. He's like, fly first class one time. It'll change your perspective. You'll do what it takes to stay up in first class. That's how driving a diesel is. I'm telling you this thing, it's just that low hum of the diesel engine. Oh yeah, I can feel the power. So smooth. Imagine Tiff, we're hitting Yellowstone, we're hitting the Badlands, we're hitting Yosemite, Canada, all the way over to the Oregon Trail. This could be us. Plus, you know, you think of that country singer vibe. I'm kind of in that dirt roads and pickup trucks from 1990 something. The old boxy ones, which is cool and great, you know, but if you make enough hits, you can get you one of these new bad boys. Okay, crew, trying to get her done with Jace. I already told you guys uh, what our objectives were on replacing the faucet in the shower. I'll show you what we got back here with Jace. Pretty simple for a guy like him. Pretty complicated for a guy like me. That's why Jace is taking care of us. We are working on this valve with a shower. I don't want uh, any water getting behind this wall. Thing about campers, small spaces to take you everywhere you need to go. But it's a little squishy when you're trying to do work back here in the shower of a pull behind. <laughs> Keeping it simple, looks pristine. Putting this brand new shower head getting her done one step at a time lastly for tonight we're changing out the sink here just to give it that other aesthetic with the black matching all the other appliances how'd you get that thing fired up it was all the way drained to be winterized but now you have a few options re-winterize it or we have to keep it on all the time your hot water is in here. It's gonna come here. It'll be off, which is here. You have to turn it from off to pilot. Come here and light your pilot. Cheer up, Duke, you sit down, okay? Guys, it's a learning experience. I'm just glad I got somebody that knows how to make these things tick and went through all the trial and error uh, RV horror stories <laughs> so he can hopefully keep us from doing it. All right, turn the pump on and pressurize it. Learning as we go. So the red hose is for traveling and this is when we just want to sit down and like plug in. Red hose is when you have a sewer dump site right here. Figured out the propane, figured out the water, the heat, most importantly, draining this bad boy so you don't make a mess. And really just the layout. I think we're going to absolutely love it. It does have a rollout awning, which is really, really nice. Moment of truth has come. We're showing you the RV setup. There's a few more tweaks, but I can't wait. I just got to show it to you. Welcome aboard. We've got water. I think it's one of those things that you're actually never done, like homeowners, RV owners. We did replace the sink, thanks to my boy, Jace. We have replaced the main mattress. It's loaded down with stuff right now. We've got lights, push button, all through the entire RV which make it so well lit for work. I got my computer out because I'm editing you guys some new music content. It's cozy guys. I cannot wait till we take you guys all across North America in this thing. Who knows, we might even make it to Alaska. We would love your advice on RV hacks, what works for you, what doesn't, if you've ever done it. You've seen the setup, I hope you enjoyed this special episode of Adventure. Cute, Kenna, and just figuring things out for the future because we got a lot planned it's gonna be special hang with us till next time adios for now